Hello. I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> You'll be cut in 18 seconds. What do you what do you mean? What do you mean you'll be cut? Don't don't cut. What you, don't cut me. I don't want Oh, I'll be cut. Hello. So uh, today I thought I'd do this partly for the smile game builder people out there who uh, just don't know how to use a 3D program. Um, and Blender is free, so you can download it from blender.org, I believe. Uh, I don't remember what the website is. Um, <clears throat> let me see. But yeah. <laughs> so anyways, or anyone in general that wants to know anything about Blender, um, <laughs> this is going to be just the bare basics. I'll go over the UE here, what you uh, should come to expect when you launch up Blender and everything. So typically when most people get into Blender, they are greeted by a little splash screen and then if they click the splash screen, they're greeted by a screen like this. You got a cube, a camera, and then typically a light or something like that. I deleted the light. I actually, my preference is not to have any objects in the field when I first boot up Blender. Um, that's my personal preference. I can show you how to do that real quick. Um, it's easy. If you right click on the cube, that selects the cube. And if you hit delete and then click this little delete, the cube goes away. Um, you can do that with any other object in here as well. I did that with the little light because I like when I'm doing models in Blender, I like to add my own light as I'm going if I need to, unless I'm doing stuff that doesn't require a light, like shadeless models, which a lot of my models are shadeless. Um, <clears throat> anyways, to save that, to save it with nothing in here, you can actually save this as your um, startup file, so it's empty. So if you go to File, Save Startup File, that anything that you have in there at the time will be saved as your startup file. So just be warned if you do that with, you know, if a really nice model in there, then all of a sudden there's, there's Watcher. Third Watcher, yeah. So anyways, um, that's how you would go about saving your, um, your startup file. Just your basic startup, however you want it to start up as far as what's in your field. Um, so on the left side here, we have a lot of little tabs here. Um, I know Blender is a little off-putting at first because you see all these menus on the left and on the right and on the bottom and there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Let's just start with the left. Um, forget about the tools here. Don't worry about those just yet. Let's, let's look at Create. Um, this is where you're going to get a lot of your basic objects just to throw into your scene here um, and uh, let's talk about the scene a little bit it's empty right but um, navigating the scene is fairly easy if you're wanting to rotate the camera the scene all you have to do is hold your middle mouse button and you can rotate all around on the inside hey what's up Zenwing welcome I am showing Blender Basics if you're interested in that. This is a 3D program out there that's free. So, anyways, you can uh, you can spin your field of view here by holding the right click or not right click the middle mouse button on your mouse. Now, there's a couple other tricks to that. If you're wanting to pan left and right, that means just moving left and right basically. You can hold shift on your keyboard and hit the middle mouse button. It's not showing it at the lower left hand side like I'd hoped it would, but that's okay. If you're holding shift, you can pan left and right. You can also use this as a way to pan up and down. So panning left, right, it's just a pan. It keeps your camera in the same position. You're just moving left and right. The middle mouse by itself rotates the camera. So. Easy enough, simple things. These are very simple things. Um, 
your middle mouse button basically does everything you need it to do in the 3D space as far as going around your objects. Um, to zoom in, it's as simple as scrolling in your mouse. So if you want to zoom in, you just scroll, scroll, scroll. And if you want to zoom out, scroll back. So scrolling forward and scrolling back will make you zoom in and out with your middle mouse button. Easy stuff. So if we have an object in there, so on your left hand side you have create. Um, there's there's three different modes you need to pay, or most, most of the time three different modes you need to pay attention to, but for today we're gonna mostly do everything in object mode um, and then also edit mode. Your middle mouse wheel is broken. Okay, Nirwanda, for someone like you, you can go to File, User Preferences, go to your Input, go to your 3D View. There's a lot of different things here. I believe this would do it right here. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things in here. You want to really find your whichever one is the middle mouse button. So you just have to replace it with a different key. So you'd have to go to your keys. I don't know where all the inputs are right now because I don't ever customize my keys on here. Which you know, if you use a program like Maya or something like that, you may want to because a lot of people who are used to Maya use Alt to rotate their camera and pan and stuff like that so um, you could set it up similar to that you would just have to come through here and kind of find wherever your middle mouse button is being used here you go middle mouse rotate view you can change that to whatever you want it to be so for you you could make it alt like it is in Maya and use alt and then ro move your mouse to uh, rotate your field of view and hold alt and shift to zoom to uh what is it pan around and all that good stuff anyways let's move on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw a cube into the uh into the scene this creates an object now it's going to create an object wherever your cursor is your 3d cursor can be moved just by right clicking your mouse I'm sorry, I said right click, I meant left click. By left clicking your mouse on whatever part of the screen. So left clicking your mouse moves your cursor. Now if I were to put another cube in there, see, it popped the cube over there. I don't like that. Personally, I don't like that. But there's an easy fix. If you lose your cursor and you're like, well, I need to create a new object and it's popping objects over here off to the to the right side all crazy like like it's doing right now you can go ahead and delete that object and press shift C at the same time if you hold it you'll press it several times but that's okay shift C will take your cursor back to the center it also centers your camera and everything else um, that's what I use easy enough right so if I lose my cursor shift C it's back. Now, that's really, I only use the cursor when I'm creating objects and moving my uh, my origin point for an object. Um, we won't really go into that quite yet. But let's go ahead and select our object. It's not selected right now. We're in object mode, which is something, again, we need to pay attention to. Being in object mode, you can right click on the square for the cube and it'll select the cube. Now it's selected. Great. So uh, what can you do while it's selected? Well there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things you can do. You can, I don't, I'm looking over here because I have a copy of my screen. I really should just be looking right here. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you can first of all scale your object, make it bigger or smaller. Um, let's let's do that real quick. If you're um, one thing to keep in mind, um, always remember something to remember is your mouse. Whenever you're messing with an object, your mouse needs to be in this in this scene somewhere when you're messing with something. If I'm off over here and I press S, nothing is happening. 
But if I'm right here, my mouse is inside this window, I hit S, that's my scale. So S, you can scale. All you have to do, I'm not doing, I'm not pressing anything on my mouse other than dragging it back and forth. This is after I've already pressed S. You don't have to hold S, you just click it once and you can scale your object. Um, there's different ways to scaling. Um, if you just want to scale it freeform, that's cool. If, if you're having to worry about, um, you know, the grid size of your object, if you press S and then hold control, it will um, size in little increments. So now it's, uh, you know, it starts out about two, it's two by two, you can make it go up to three by three or four by four. This would be like three by three. Yeah, four by four, you know, however you want to do it. Holding control does that. Holding shift does a slower scale so you can be a little more precise in your freeform. Holding control does it in little increments. Holding shift does it slower. And then just normal is normal. So uh, if you wanted to say you were scaling something, you accidentally hit S and you're scaling, you can hit <laughs> right click on your mouse to cancel the, uh, the scale. If you hit left click on the mouse it'll save the scroll so now it's bigger um, okay and the, this is going to be the next shortcut that you're gonna need to remember and uh, it's gonna help you out a lot is control Z if you've used any other art program or any kind of anything on a computer um, on a PC Control Z is your best friend. That is undo. We want to undo the scale. So it's going to step back by steps. So if I hit Control Z now, boom, pops it right back to where it was, where I started, undoes it. Um, so yeah, very useful when you're needing to step backwards. Now, the one thing about um, Blender is it has a limited number of undos. You can change that in the user preferences. So uh, the thing to remember about Blender is that every tiny little thing that you do, a rotate, a scale, adding more parts to an object, anything, every step is recorded. And uh, unfortunately, it comes with a limited amount of undos, but you can change that. Here it is. So your global undo, it's currently set to 32 when you first load up the program. Um, I'm just going to set it to like, I don't know, 300, something like that. Uh, 256 looks like that's the max, so you can only back up 256 steps. Go. You can save that user preference so you don't have to set that again. So there you go. That'll just give you the max number of undos in case you need to undo a million times. You messed up somewhere along the way. Um, which uh, comes also comes down to your next your next options here is saving. When I save, I save you I hit control S and that brings up your save menu. I can save this as whatever I wanted to, so we'll save this as tutorial. But this will save it in its current state. If you're wanting to save, you know, multiple files, I would recommend, you know, maybe every 30 minutes or an hour saving a different file name. So that way, if you do mess up big time and you don't have enough undos to go back to something to like, you're just like, you totally messed up on something, but you want to start back to where you were maybe when you first opened the program. Um, you could not save, but if you did save between that point, that's just something you have to keep in mind. So anyways, random stuff. <clears throat> All right, so let's play with this box some more. All right, so uh, what you see here, too, so we just scaled it. You can also, while you're in object mode, you can move the object 
in the 3D space um, at free will. If you just grab it and move it, that just this I'm using my left click on my mouse. You can drag it and drop it anywhere in the scene. Oops. Um, if you let's undo this. Shift C. Okay. If um, if say you only want to move it on one axis. Um, you have your X, which is the red. You can move it left and right on the X. You can move it in and out on the Y, which is the green line. So you just have to grab the arrow. That's all you have to do, moving it left and right. Or you can move it up and down in the Z. And that's uh, moving it up and down in the 3D space. So shift C. I'm going to control Z back until it's back to the center here. There we go. All right. What else can I tell you here? So that's just basically moving an object. Now, you'll notice when you're moving the object, the object has this little orange dot here. That is your, basically your pivot point, as it were, for the object. So we went over scaling, and we went over moving the object like this, up and down in the three space. Now, if you're wanting to rotate an object, you can hit R. R will rotate it. Now, the way I'm rotating it right now is without any, a it, without it being locked to any kind of access right now. So when you hit R and just start moving your mouse, you don't have to hold it down or anything like that. You just, again, press it once, just like scale. You can rotate it. That just spin, you can spin around, do whatever you want, but that doesn't, that just rotates it on its axis point. And you'll see how that arrow, it, the lines go, going from the center point to wherever your mouse is, so when you're rotating it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I'm going to hit um, right click and it's going to cancel that. Now, if I want to rotate it on an axis point, after you hit R, you can hit basically whatever axis point you want to rotate it on. So if I hit Y, it's going to rotate it on the Y axis. That's important to remember because if you're trying to rotate a certain part of the object, and you only want it to rotate on that axis, that's how you would do it. You rotate, hit R, and then Y, and then start moving your object. So let's try that for X. So I'm going to hit R, and then I'm going to hit X, and a line pops up, and now I can rotate it on the X axis. What about the Z? Well, I can do the same thing on the Z. So R, and then Z, and then dragging my mouse around like this will basically allow me to rotate the object on the z-axis which again this this is very important to remember because when you're rotating an object if you just start free rotating it sometimes it's going to go in directions you don't want it to go to um, that's why rotating object on a specific axis makes it a lot easier to do what you want you basically makes you makes the object do what you want it to do. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel this stuff, get this thing back to the center of the, <laughs> the plane here. Okay, so I think I've gone over basically everything you can do with the object in object mode. Uh, Y'all still with me here? Looks like uh, Zenwing uh, checked out. He was like, no, nah, I don't wanna be here right now. Near Wanda, you're still here. I don't know if you're even interested in this stuff, but it's okay. I'm still gonna continue on my way here. Okay. So, next thing to remember here, or the next thing I can go on to. Yay! At least I have one person here. And I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So, object mode. Let's go ahead and switch modes. Let's go into edit mode. 
Now, if you're already in object mode, an easy way to switch to edit mode is make sure your object is selected and then hit tab on the keyboard. This goes to edit mode. And what edit mode lets you do is basically edit the object. Uh, this is going to be useful for modeling. So we're going to get into the very basics of modeling now. So what can you do? Well, when I first hit tab, you'll see that everything was selected. So if I do the same things that I did before, you'll notice that nothing moves around this origin point anymore. I'm actually editing the object itself without any restrictions to its origin. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I scale it, the origin still stays the same. Why is this useful? Well, if I get out of object mode, or get out of edit mode by hitting tab, I'm back in object mode, and I rotate this object, it's still rotating based off of its pivot point, or its origin. So that becomes useful for objects that you want to maybe rotate around a certain other object. You know, it has an origin point of another object, or maybe it's, um, you know, you want it to spin in a, in a freeform way that's, you know, away from its, uh, away from its origin. So you, you could think of many different ways that that would be useful. But anyways, I'm going to go back into edit mode here. So yeah, I can scale it, rotate it, and everything. And it's not restricted to its pivot point. But what you can also do is edit the basics of the object. Now, every object has three different types of um, ways of editing it. The first way is editing it, its vertices. Vertices are the, s the points at which the 3D object connects like together. It's almost like connect the dot, you know, like think of it that way. You are connect, connect the dot for this cube and you've got a cube, right? If I move this up and down, it actually bends the object to wherever I move that vertice. Same goes for this side. And now, let's just have a little fun. If you want to multiple select vertices, you can hold shift on your keyboard. Oh, I need to tell you a very important step. I'm selecting vertices with right click on my mouse. So just keep that in mind. It's not left click. Left click will move your cursor. Right click is how you select things. It's something I had to get used to with Blender. You can switch that. Like it's easy to switch that, but now that I'm used to it that way, I don't really care. I, I prefer to use right click to select and left click to move my cursor. I'm used to it, so I don't need to change it. <coughs> now you can select multiple vertices by holding shift and selecting those vertices. And look, I just made myself uh, an obelisk. There we go. All hail the giant obelisk, right? So that's what's cool. You can move these around. Now if I move it this way, it bends that way. If I move it this way, it bends that way. You know, does, does whatever I want it to, you know? When it comes to 3D modeling, the sky's the limit. Your imagination is basically where it stops, you know? If uh, you've expended your imagination, then you're done. I'm undoing here. There we go. I'm so glad I have more than 32 undos. Okay. So, let's see what happens when you switch to edge mode. Edge mode allows you to actually select the edges of the object. Instead of the, the points at which the edges meet, you're actually selecting the entire edge. This makes it easy for you to just edit one edge <coughs> without having to select multiple vertices. And you can select multiple edges at the same time. 
just like you can vertices. So you can play around with that. Select your edges, move them up and down, undo, have fun with it. You know, it's kind of cool. Look, I just made a trapezoid. How easy was that? I mean, literally, modeling is not as hard as what most people would think it is. Now, something else is you can do it by face mode. Face mode, okay, and I'm again, I'm selecting these down here, so there's vertice mode, edge mode, which is the line, and then the faces is the little square here. Faces allow you to move the faces. This, as you can tell, would be extremely useful for modeling. And if you can... S what about a circle? Um, I'll, what do you mean a circle? We'll, we'll move on to circles in a bit, because I'll, I'll play with a sphere and show you different things you can do with a sphere or a circle. Okay. So, um... Now, selecting a face, you can actually scale the entire face down. And there you go. And you can scale it back up. You can rotate it. You can make some funky looking objects. I mean, it's it's really just fun fun to play with, even if you don't really know what you're doing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you're learning something. And that's that's the cool thing about Blender. You know, if you're just playing around, and you mess something up, you can always just start a new file and just start messing around again, you know? Or just delete your object as a whole. Hello, baby, you so cute. Oh. Everybody say hi, Lily. Oh. And hi, Linda. <laughs> hi. Oh, my beautiful babies. Okay, so. Let me, let me go ahead and back up here. I'm back all the way out. Let's put this guy back the way he was. Okay. 54. That was 50. See? See? Those... Those actions add up quickly. That was 54. So you can see, like, how easily it is to, to mess something up. I'm... I'm what they call, like, a... Save whore. I am gonna save all the time. If I'm actually working on something, I'm not saving right now because I don't really care. I'm not, not really working on something. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to vertice mode here, and now we're going to do a very basic part of modeling, and it's called loop cuts. Loop cuts um, are very useful when editing just about anything. Um, what loop cuts allow you to do is basically make a cut in the object around basically you can cut it all the way around the object well, and the best way to, to describe it is to just basically show you how to do it so I'm just gonna hit control R on my keyboard and if I hover over the object you can see that a little pink line pops up and it kinda depending on where I am and how my camera angle is you can see where these loop cuts are so I'm just going to cut it in half along the x-axis here. That adds basically more vertices uh, and more faces for you to play with. So now I have a line that's going through my object all the way around that I can edit. Why is that useful? Well, you have more polygons to work with. And polygons basically are just the faces of the objects. So if I were to select this edge here that I just created, I can now very quickly create a house-like shape here. Uh, cutting a diagonal is... You either need to use the cut tool um, or... Um, the uh, the join tool. So, real quick, I'm gonna create some more um, loop cuts. And as you can see, I'm just gonna do it on every single side. So now I have four faces on each side of my my box here. 
Now I'm going to show you how to do the diagonal cuts. This here, if we take this vertice and we move it up like this, you can see that you've got some problems with the polygons here. They're not, you know, they're not automatically kind of diagonal here. They're kind of bending at this point. It's, you know, in that, in a 3D world, that would not look good. You know, most people would not want to leave that model that way. But, let's back up a little bit. Let's say I wanted to join this vertice and this vertice and have a line cut diagonal through here. Well, if I hold shift and select these two vertices and press J on the keyboard, I just created a cut joining these two vertices through this center vertice. Now basically it allows you to combine those two vertices. Um, it doesn't have to have a vertice in the middle. If there's not a vertice in the middle, it will create one. So for instance, if I create one between these two vertices, it just created a vertice on this little edge, which is, which is great. You need that because a lot of times in 3D modeling, um, you will get in situations like this where you need to create this kind of oops okay don't don't do what I just did press something the wrong thing <laughs> and then um, you'll get in a situation where you need extra diagonal lines just like that Whoop. now I've got a spiky cube check that out okay so We've learned how to loop cut and join vertices. What else could we learn? Well, what about extruding? Extruding is another modeling tool that you will use literally all of the time. Extruding allows you to actually extrude a face so if I were to select face, let's go into face mode, just just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go switch to face mode here. I'm going to select this face, and I want to extrude this face. If I hit E on my keyboard, that is that enables the extrude for that face. So now I just extruded this face out. What's cool about the extrude tool? This can also be used to make holes in objects. So, for instance, um, maybe I want this to be an entrance to something. So, if I hit E again on the keyboard, and then directly after hitting E, I press S, I can scale that extrude down. And you can see that it's Instead of extruding out, I'm basically using the extrude on the same face, like on the same side, and making it smaller. So, how does that make me... How, how can I create an... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do in this, this program. And it's really easy. If you remember all the shortcuts, if you can watch this video about seven times over and remember all the shortcuts because <laughs> there are a lot of shortcuts um, you know um, this program is super powerful now I'm gonna hit now that I've scaled this down I'm gonna hit E one more time and I'm gonna push it in so instead of coming out here I can actually go in and I just created a hole in this object just from three extrudes it's that easy. So let's back up. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to select a face. I'm going to hit E. I'm going to pull it out. Okay? Right? And I'm just, right after I hit E, I'm moving my mouse. Again, with all of these shortcuts, you don't have to hold the keys down. You just press them once and move your mouse and it'll follow it. What's, what's cool about extruding is a lot of times, if it's directly on an axis, facing out on like say the x-axis and I hit the E key it'll extrude on that axis 
so I don't actually have to hold um, anything. So I don't actually have to hit, hit Y or hit X or anything like that. A lot of the times, as long as it's directly on that axis, it should be good. A lot of times it'll just extrude on that axis. Hit E again. See? But sometimes you will have to hit the axis, just in case. Anyways, I was making a hole. So if I hit extrude, and then S, scale it down. You could also scale it up. But if you scale it down, and then press right click, not right click, I'm sorry, left click, it'll save the extrude. And then hit E again, and then left click again, it'll save the extrude got a hole. Woohoo! How fun was that? Okay. Um, extruding is fun. Extruding is great. But what's even better than extruding? Actually, it's, it's about as useful as extruding. Depending on the situation, you can do what uh, what's called a bevel. So I can take this edge and bevel it, hit Control b Control Shift B, I believe. Uh, yeah, Control Shift B. I'm beveling this edge. So, ta da! It's that easy. Let me do that again. I'll do it on this edge over here. Control Shift B. And I'm beveling that edge. It's really useful for rounding edges out. So, if I wanted to make this look a little more round at the top, there it is. It's that easy. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do on here. Okay, so I'm going to move on to a different object. So we've, we've played around with this cube. We've made all kinds of things. I'm not showing you how to make anything particular. I'm just saying, hey, let's play around with this. Oh, actually, what happens when we extrude uh, a vertice? You can extrude a vertice just like you can a face. If I extrude a vertice, it just creates an edge. So, uh, that, that edge is not very useful, but if I extrude an edge itself, I can extrude this edge by itself. And now I just created a ramp here. What's cool about that is I can select any edge, hit E, and then I can extrude, I can hit Z, I can extrude here. I mean, you can just extrude everything. Just extrude everything, just do it. <laughs> Anyways, you can extrude edges, you can extrude faces, you can extrude vertices. In every, there are many situations where you will be using extrude. And when I start modeling things, you'll you'll notice there, there's a ton of things that you will, all of these things will be used. Okay, so I'm going to go back to object mode. You could click down here on this little menu here and go back to object mode if you want. Or if you're already in edit mode. You can hit tab and it'll go back to object mode. And I'm gonna delete this object. It's pretty useless to me. Alright, I'm gonna hit shift C so I can go back, put my cursor back to the origin or the center here. <coughs> Sorry. So let's create. There's a different objects you can create, but I'm gonna teach you how to create an object out of just um, out of just a circle here. So here's the circle. There, it's not filled in or anything. There's no faces on it. There's nothing. But you'll see here when I hit add circle there's some vertices on here. This is how many vertices create this circle. So if I say I put 16, I'm going to put half as many vertices as it started with. You can see now it turns into 16 edges. We're at 16 edges, but yeah, one, two, 
Oh yeah, that's 16 engines. I'm sorry. So that's how many vertices. That's how many points it has. 16 points. So, uh, yeah. And you can change the size of it here. There's all kinds of things you can do with the circle. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, now that I have my circle selected, it's created. I'm going to go back into edit mode. Now that I'm in edit mode, you can see once, and if I'm in vertice mode, you can see every single one of those vertices that created. What's cool about this is, yeah, there's a cylinder tool, but let me show you how to select a loop or a line of, basically a connecting line of edges. If you hold Alt on your keyboard and right click on any of these edges here, it'll select this whole loop edge. Now, let me show you why that's useful. I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to hit E. And then I'm going to press Z so it stays locked in the Z. And I'm going to scroll up. Okay, you'll notice this looks a little darker than normal. What's weird about creating you know, a circle and extruding faces sometimes. Sometimes the faces, the way that they're rendered, is that a face has a front side and a back side. And that's called the normals of the object. Right now we're looking at the back side of the faces, which is kind of weird. It rendered the, the front of the faces on the inside of the object, which is really odd, but it's an easy thing to fix. If I hit A on my keyboard, a couple times it'll select the entire object and then if I hit control N it'll flip the normals. That just made the faces face outward instead of inward. So now this object has all its faces facing the proper direction. Why that's useful is say you're making an object in, for a video game, for a smile game creator. You... Any faces that are facing the inside of the face, the inside of the normal that are facing out, you'll be able to see through, which is not ideal for creating objects because unless you want to, you want, unless you want it to be invisible on that face, it's not good. You need to, you need all your faces facing outward. So I'm going to create a loop cut for this um, cylinder here and show you why it's so important to be able to hit Alt and right click on these edges. Because you can actually select any of these edges all at once. That becomes very important. Because if I'm holding Alt and I hit right click here, I can select a center edge like this, scale it, and it's very easy to uniform uniformly scale something. So I just made an hourglass figure very quickly. Now I'm going to select this edge and hit fill, which is the F button, and I can fill that edge. Or, yeah, fill that circle. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Hit, select it, hit F, and I just filled in those. Awesome. I just created like an hourglass. Um, if I hit Control R again, scale this in. Control R. Oops. Control R. Scale. Ta da! Very useful for creating objects. So let's play with that extrude again. So if I select this upper edge and I hit E for extrude, but I hit S instead of moving it, I can create a hole. I hit E again for extrude and now I'm pressing down on the Z. Okay, I'm cutting through this object. So I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna make this hole a little bit smaller. I had to back up twice. Scale. Now I'm going to extrude and then go down. Whoop. Ta-da! It's basically made a pinwheel. Ta-da! So 
So yeah, um, trying to think of other things I can show you that might be useful. Well, when you're using this, the join with a circle, you can literally join any one of these edges together. You just gotta be careful because it can create some weird shapes. If I hit join here, and then join with these two. I can do that. I can create something like a, a little fountain, a low poly fountain or something like that. You can actually just join up all of these edges right here. I don't know. I know there's a quick way to do this. <laughs> I don't remember the shortcut. But this is one way to do it. And I may not always show you the right way to do it, so if in the comments or something like that you know of a shortcut or something like that. Well, I know you won't, near Wanda, but someone else might if they join. Oh look, I just made a top. Look at this. I just made a top. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, one of those top. You know what I'm talking about? Should know what I'm talking about. It's like one of those tops that you. Uh, I used to have one when I was a kid. Ta-da! <laughs> Anyways, fun stuff. Oh look, I forgot a edge here. Join. Yay! Okay, so maybe we should create a basic object. What should I make? Let's make... Let's make a bottle. I think that'll be easy. Like a bottle, because there's no like standalone bottles in the... Actually, I need to go back to object mode and because I deleted the vertices for the circle, but I didn't actually delete the object itself. How would you make a ball? Well, that's simple. There's actually a UV sphere and an icosphere. Icosphere is made up of tri... Um, tr like three-sided polygons. And a UV sphere is made of uh, four-sided... four-edged polygons. I always use a UV sphere. Very easy. We just put a UV sphere in there. Now, when you first add it in there, again, you can change how many segments and rings it has. I'm going to make it 16 segments and eight rings. This is a fairly, fairly low poly ball. It's, it's kind of like a disco ball here. We got a disco ball. Now, something to remember also for the future if I were to take this ball and put it in a game engine, it's going to look exactly like this. It's going to have all these little blocky edges. What they call that is the type of shading that this, this ball is using. I want this ball to have smooth surfaces because it's a ball. I don't want it to look like a disco ball. So I'm going to come over here to tools. I'm still in object mode. And I'm going to go to shading. While this object is selected, if I hit smooth, it's going to smooth the edges on it. What that does is when I throw it into a 3D rendering program, or 3D game making program, or whatever, like, like Smile Game Maker, it's going to be smooth. It won't have those rough edges. If I hit undo, I imported it like that. That's how it's going to look in the Game Maker. So, you going to make sure... You know, if you're making something with smooth surface, that you basically give it smooth shading. Now, if I hit tab, this is the edit. This is what the ball looks like in edit, edit mode. Again, you can do the same thing. You can edit this ball however you want. You make it look lumpy if you want. Just like, give it some little divots and stuff. This is an imperfect ball now, so here we go. Now we've got some yucky divots and stuff. I'm gonna undo that. Okay, so 
What can we do with the ball? We could add loop cuts if we want to. So I could add loop cuts here and here and here and here. I can add them pretty much anywhere. And you can play. Just play with it. It's fun to play with. You can make some crazy things. Add another loop cut here. Make like a, a duck-like creature here now. I'm gonna hold Alt and try to select this edge. There we go. We got a we got a duck. We'll just poke this in like that. There we go. We got we got a duck. Ta-da! Easy enough. <laughs> Anyways, I just encourage you to play with it uh, when it comes to that stuff because. Until you know what you're making, just get associated with the controls. So, yeah, that's easy enough. Now, I want to make I want to make a bottle because this the bottle will use almost almost all of the things that I showed you, other than probably rotating. So. Let's start this bottle off. Let's start it off as a cylinder. So when you hit cylinder, I want it to be generally low poly when I'm creating for uh, a game maker like Smile Game Builder because everything in it's low poly. It's easier to make things match and look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to probably eight. Nah, I'll give it a little more than that. I'll give it 12. I want to make it look at least somewhat round. So, here we go. We've got a cylinder with 12 vertices. And I'm going to I'm going to leave it at that cuz I can edit this stuff while I'm editing the object itself. Actually, we can give it a radius of uh, one is four squares, so we're going to do 0.5, and we'll give it a depth of one. We'll basically cut it in half. Okay? Music is way too loud. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Chromosome. I didn't know. I appreciate you uh, letting me know that. Is, is this better, Chromosome Cake? That's going to make the video... Uh, a little hard to hear for the YouTubers. I'm sorry. Okay, so... Awesome. I'm going to change the song because I this song sounds ridiculous. Here we go. Okay, now we're in edit mode. I just hit edit mode. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to move this up to where it is even with the plane here because I want it to sit on on the ground. Enjoying the music, but uh, who cares about Dress's, Dress's face or voice? Who cares? Okay, so um, I'm going to move this up. Okay. So I'm going to hold control and I'm going to grab the Z line here and I'll move it up. That moved it up a little too high. So I'm going to hold control and then hold shift right after that. And I'm going to snap it down in sections down to the, uh, down to the plane. Whoa. If I can grab the, Oh, I'm hitting shift first. You gotta hold control, then shift, and then... Or at least I thought that's how you did it. Anyways. Ugh. That's not going well. I'm just gonna drag it to the to be even with the plane here. You can also hit in and give it a Z location of zero. Or... Or where was it at? That's about... 0.5 so I'll give a Z location of 0.5 now there we go if you hit in you have some more transform tools over here which can be useful 
what's his channel are you asking what what this channel is this is this channel is a little bit of everything sometimes I play games sometimes I make games uh, right now I'm doing a blender tutorial because I just got into a game maker called smile game builder and there are some people out there who would like to learn how to use blender so that they can make their own 3d objects for this uh, for this program that I'm using so I'm just teaching the very basics of um, blender so that you can make oh what's my YouTube channel uh, it's uh... gosh I would have to grab it I don't, I don't have a link actively ready here YouTube hold on one second I got it right here, guys. My bad, Chrome. I, I, I didn't know what you meant. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Chromo something. Cake. Sounds delicious. I like cake. Okay. Alright, so we're going to make a bottle. I just created a cylinder. Went into edit mode. Uh, I created the cylinder with eight sides. And now I'm going to I'm going to delete this face because I want to be able to um, make the bottle go into kind of a bottle form. So I'm going to hit X on the keyboard and just delete the face. Thanks, Nirwanda, and thank you, Chromosome Cake. Okay, so I'm gonna make this bottle by holding not holding. I'm going to hit extrude, which is E. So you just press E. Then I'm going to scale. So I'm going to hit S without pressing anything else and scale inward like this. So there we go. Now what I can do is I can, on the Z axis, move this up. And that gives me kind of that. Uh, rounded edge that you need for a bottle. Again, this is low poly, so I'm not going to create a really round edge, just round enough so that when the character sees it from afar, it looks like a bottle. And then I'm going to hit extrude one more time. I'm going to extrude up. Now I noticed something. I kind of want I kind of wanted to come in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and alt at the same time and right click on this line here and it's going to select that entire loop. So now I can move this up and down. I can also scale it. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more. Yeah. So now that I have a little more smaller top there. Now I'm going to drag this up a little bit. And now I'm going to hit extrude again. I'm, this is a whole bunch of extruding. Yes, I did. Extrude. And now I'm going to scale. And I'm just going to give it a tiny little lip. And then I'm going to extrude again. Come up. And then... Again, every time that I'm extruding and I'm done extruding, I'm hitting the left click mouse. That just finishes the extrude, so I can extrude again. So I'm going to extrude one more time, hit E, then hit scale, and then I'm going to make the inside lip of it. So I'm done extruding that. I'm going to extrude one more time, and I'm going to extrude down. And there we go. After I hit right click here, I have basically created what I need to create for the bottle here. Now, you're saying to this to yourself, well, that's a fancy bottle, but now what? Well, you could make a texture for it if you want, um, but right now I am not going to get into texturing. So we just made a bottle. Easy enough, right? 
If you say wanted to bevel this edge, you could. If you wanted to make it a little more round, you could. And I'm going to hit Control Shift B. Oh no, never mind. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's not. I thought. There we go. Control B, not Control Shift B. Control B will round that edge off a little bit more. Control B will bevel that edge. You could do that with this. If you're making something a little bit higher poly, you could actually bevel all of these edges. Whoops, wrong one. Just select the right edge. Control B. Ta da! Uh, so chromosome. I I actually uh, use Unity. I'm part of a Unity team, and we're making a little kind of a game that's a, a mix of a different different types of arcade games that I used to play back in the back in the day. Um, but Smile Game Builder is good for people who are just getting into um, 3D and like want to make an RPG. You know, if they want both, this. That engine is practically perfect for that, and I've used RPG Maker. I have RPG Maker. I, I made. I actually have a, a game that's like five hours plus long on it that I've created. Um, so I'm not against any engine really. Uh, I use a lot of different engines, so it just comes down to personal preference. And I, I like to play around with a little bit of everything. It's just this is just a hobby for me. <laughs> there it is. This is just a hobby. This is not my job um you know I, I get paid to do other things so you know maybe someday this would be fun you know if if that little group that i'm in takes off but right now you know it's whatever i use practically everything <laughs> but yeah there's the little bottle If you want to, you could even create a little plug there. Uh, you can just put another cylinder in there. Hold on, let me hit Shift C again. I'm going to make another cylinder, move it up here, and then scale it and create a little plug here. What I can do is I can actually collect, uh, bevel this edge, and I've got got a little bottle here with a little lid. Uh, to select a ring of vertices, uh, I went over that a little bit earlier, but it's it's very easy. You just hold Alt and then click one of the edges of the of the uh, the line of vertices, the loop there. And if you want to create more loops. If you hit Control R, you can create another loop. You can actually even move the loops up and down before you place them. If you hold, if you hit Control R, you can actually click it once and then move up and down on the mouse and then click it again and it places that vertice there. So if I wanted to give this a little bit of a a, uh, a little more of a, a rounded edge there, I could. But yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put another edge here. Uh, another way to move the edge is if you've already placed it um, and you just want to move this, this loop here up and down freely, if you hit G and then G again, that will just slide that, that edge up and down when you start moving your mouse so that you can just place it however you want to place it. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to select all the, I'm going to get into object mode. So I just hit tab to get out of edit mode. I'm going to select both of my objects and then I'm going to smooth edge them. If, if say your, uh, 
But yeah, now it's a little smooth bottle. Oh, sorry, I'm mumbling. I'm starting to get a little tired. Okay. Wow, this this has f bombs all over the place. I am. I have no idea what I just was playing there. I'm sorry about that. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay. I know, jeez, man. I just downloaded it from Overclocked Remix. <laughs> I was like, I didn't think that place had some some bad uh, lyrics in their stuff, but apparently they do. At least it wasn't raunchy. Yep. <laughs> Hi, baby. Uh, is there uh, is there any type of object you guys would like to learn how to make? Something simple, of course. But I can make I can make an object. Yes. Um, so, and that's another thing, you know, like, subdividing something wasn't really going to get into that, but I'll go ahead and show, show y'all. There are, there are tricks to make this look smoother. What subdividing does is actually divides up all of the faces to make the object have more polygons so it's smoother. Um... So I can go to a bowl. I could make a bowl. That'd be pretty simple to make. A what? I did not. Okay. Um, but uh, the best way I like to do is actually apply a modifier to the object. So I can right click on here because I can control how many subdivides that the, uh, the object has through the modifier. Anyways, it's this little wrench here go to add modifier and I can add a subdivision surface modifier it actually does that now what's a little wonky about that is because I have this as a flat edge down here it's subdividing that really weird so I would have to create more edges down here to make that look better so if I for instance hide that subdivide select this ring and hold control or press control B and then bevel that edge it will probably look better now yep looks much better now a bowl yeah I can show you guys how to make a bowl all right all right so I'm gonna delete these objects no no what? There's a way to get around that. Oh, what's that? Teach me something, please. I like learning things. You forgot how though. Oh no. Okay, well maybe maybe next time we can look into that. This was a quick fix for me, um, just for the time being. So I'm going to go ahead and tab out. I'm going to delete these objects. Goodbye, bottle. We'll miss you. Yes, we will miss you. All right, let's make a bowl. All right. So um, how should I make this bowl? Oh, there's several different ways you can make a bowl. Really, there are. Um, you could make one very similar uh to the way that we made the uh we made the <laughs> the bottle man wow i'm spacing out okay i'm gonna make a circle this time and i'm gonna make it yeah six let's yeah 16 vertices is fine you know if you want to make a lower poly you can it's kind of up to you so i'm gonna go ahead and I don't really okay so here's the thing objects with um, faces that are not going to be seen like at the bottom of a bowl it, unless you're rendering from like the balls tipping off the edge of something and you need to see the bottom of it for video games a lot of times you don't need to fill that in so I'm going to extrude this now all my faces again we went over this before when we were making the circle before all my faces right now are facing inward and they're not facing outward I'm gonna hit a to select all my faces 
and then hit control in and that's going to flip my normals so that all my faces are facing out so that when I render an object like this it renders properly in a in a game there's probably several different ways you can make a ball I'm just gonna make it this way first of all I'm gonna select this stuff and I'm gonna scale it because I want to make the rim of it smaller so I selected everything by hitting A and I'm scaling with S to scale down. I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to hit extrude. And then I'm going to hit E for extrude and then S to scale this out. And then we're just going to go bloop. Now I'm going to fill this in. I'm actually going to fill that in because what I'm going to do for the bowl is uh, where I'm going to add a modifier that will give it some uh, depth. Why are you having her kick me? <laughs> okay, so extrude. I'm going to scale this. So making your bowl is very similar to making the bottle. So we're just going to keep extruding here in steps. And you can make it however many steps you want, however smooth you want it to make, depending on how smooth you want the object to be. I'm going to scale that out and then pull it up. So say this is right here the bowl shape that you want. So here's our bowl. Well, if I were to render it now, all my normals are right here facing on the inside so like in a game you would be able to see through the bowl which is not ideal there is a modifier that can actually solidify this object so let's do that let's go to our modify and let's true let's choose our solidify modifier now what solidify does is it basically gives a almost a mirror of the object on the inside or outside depending on how you change your thickness so if I gave it negative thickness the thickness would go on the outside if I gave it a positive thickness it looks like it's going on the inside it's dependent on which way your faces are facing so just keep that in mind I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of thickness here uh, I'll give it like a, a three Whoa, not a not a full three. How about a point three? Sorry, uh, not even that. A point oh three. Look at that. See, sizing things in uh, Blender is very weird. So a point oh three. I wasn't even paying attention there, but a point oh three thickness. If I go ahead and get out of get out of the um, edit mode here and apply this modifier, and then go back into edit mode. Now I have all of my um, vertices to play with for the bowl. I can select this ring. Bowls kind of have a uh, almost like a rounded down inside there. So I'm scaling this a little bit. There we go. There we go. A bowl. This is a wide bowl. This would be like a salad bowl. I'm going to throw some salad and toss it about in there. Then I can go ahead and smooth my shading. And, you know, when I put this in there, we've got a pretty fancy looking bowl there. You have to select the little triangle. Cube. Oh! You mean to delete it without having to go to object mode? Oh, and then you can change the mean crease in the toolbar on the right side. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so if I were to... Not sure what you're saying. I 
another thing, um, if you did want to see the underside of this thing, you could extrude here, resize it, and then push this up a little bit. Actually, I want to extrude again, and then push it up. And then you've got more of a, a rim for that um, bowl there. Then you can change the... Ah, oh. switching between. Mean crease. Oh, ah, I see what you're saying. That's how. Okay, yeah, yeah. That in so like it has more of a crease instead of a. Uh yeah, that makes sense. I could actually turn it up all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Hey, thanks for that tip. So I can hit that, then change the mean crease. That's pretty cool. It's a cool little tip there to make a sharper edge there. Without it uh, looking funny when you subdivide it. So like if I were to subdivide this thing, let's go to subdivide. Subdivision surface. Yeah, so I can take this edge on the inside here, click this, and change the mean crease. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Same thing for this. I could do that. Give it a little bit of a meaner crease there. Nice. Yeah, that does look good. Cool tip. Cool tip, man. Awesome. So we made a bowl and we made a bottle. Um, I was going to keep this stream a little bit shorter than normal. But uh, next time, I plan on t going over some basic modeling. What I'll do is I'll model the bottle again next time. And then we'll, uh, we'll go into um, UV mapping. And we will create a texture for the bottle. As well as a little, um, you know, like maybe put a label on the texture or something like that. So... We'll get into that next time. But today, and I'm sorry you caught me on the tail end here, Chromo, but uh, I am going to tie, uh, yeah, end this here, because I'm getting tired. It's been a long weekend. So I will actually be streaming again on Tuesday night. We'll go over creating an object and creating a UV map for the object and go over some texture painting for the object. So that will be next time. I really appreciate you guys being here. You can get a similar using auto smooth with the vertex group tab and setting the angle around 35. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Alrighty. You guys have a wonderful night. I will hopefully see you guys next time. Yeah, subdivide mo modifier. You can also change the type of uh, subdivision it is. This is smoother. All right. Anyways, good night, everyone.